So here we go. I've got wet head, so I've put some makeup on. <laughs> uh, um, I've got me, a, a, since I'm um, sitting here getting dolled up some, to um, just for me, some new clothes. I hadn't bought new clothes in God knows when, even though I, oh, I did get them as a bargain. So that that made it better. But I was like, it does. It does make you feel better. And if you feel beautiful, you're going to look beautiful to everybody. So that's going to be inside and outside. So we need to work on our, um, on us, inside, outside. And just remember, we start with our canvas and build out. <laughs> I love that, Amy. It's so funny because I just realized when I was going through the PowerPoint that I'm going to share with y'all this morning. It's one we've already looked at a little bit and I added to. But I realized that since we started this endeavor back last June, a year, over a year now, I have been in work clothes. I mean, that's my attire is work clothes that have paint on them or because we have worked and worked and worked inside and outside. And so I haven't worn my usual gypsy clothes and I haven't... I had to push through the holes in my ears because I hadn't had earrings in in so long. And, you know, right? <laughs> One of mine had closed. And I was going to go have it re-pierced. And I, I said, no, it was open before. It's only skin. You can do this. So I, <laughs> I worked on it for a whole day, but I got it to go through. And I'm wearing earrings again. Oh, I hadn't yay. worn earrings in probably four or five years. Wow. I just stopped. Well, and I don't know why. I just stopped. Well, and it makes oh, sense. That sounds like something I did. It feels And you bad. have to work through. Yes, we do not need to settle. And Chrissy, just keep going because I'm feeling better after you tell me to put my eye makeup and stuff on. It makes you feel better and it just goes all over. It does. It does. People kind of brag. I've heard men brag that their wives don't have to wear any makeup. And I'm like, well, okay. But if they want to wear makeup and they feel better with it, well, she, Amy was on for Bible study a couple of weeks ago and she was getting ready for her reunion, class reunion, and she had done, tried some different types of makeup. And we were just like, oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. So we just need a little encouragement sometimes to decorate ourselves, especially as our bodies are getting older and they're not, they're not what we want them to be. <laughs> <laughs> they're just not oh, anymore. Yeah. Um, so I well, love let that. Me, let me tell you, let me share <laughs> <laughs> so this is makeup free and it's not by choice but i mean i i enjoy wearing makeup but when you go like this <laughs> you end up making quite a big mess <laughs> oh that's true denise I you decorate with the eyeglass <laughs> frames i've ever seen well, i know I, I said you decorate your face with the prettiest eyeglass frames i've well, ever this seen is the, this is the only color i don't mess up and you truly, I do, wear I do wear makeup sometimes, but it's, it's very, um, trying to get it on. So sure. I didn't even think about that, but you so I wear colored glasses. There you go. That's all you have to do. And what, whatever it is, even, I, I don't know if you remember years ago, Kathy and Ginger and I went to Maine to that Barbara Applegate workshop and all the women were, were northerners, they were pretty direct and bold, but most of them just had real short haircuts, no makeup, and they just had t-shirts on. Well, we got there and Kathy's just, what's that Chico shop? She's always just dressed to the tees. And I had on my gypsy attire on and Ginger is kind of in between the two of us. And they kept talking about these Southern girls were giving them a run for their money. The last day of the workshop, they all had on now, one of them was a t-shirt with some sparkly glitter on it, <laughs> and a couple of them had makeup on, and, you know, at first, they were real quiet and, and, and sort of intimidated, like they'd already made up their minds they didn't like us, and by the time we got finished with the week together and laughing and painting and enjoying ourselves, it was funny how we had influenced them to be more colorful and to, you know, uh -huh. so why not? I mean, we're artists for Pete's sake. But how I dress definitely makes a difference with how I feel. It and does. Right. It really does. It Mostly, <laughs> I wear no makeup and pajamas. <laughs> yeah. I decided I a long time ago when COVID started, I decided I'm, I'm, if I'm going to spend a lot of time in pajamas, I'm going to buy some nice ones. <laughs> yes, some pretty pajamas. There so I bought pretty pajamas. They're kind of wore out now, though. 
There's so, this wonderful Soma. I don't know if y'all know about Soma. My daughter-in-law buys mm -hmm. Soma pajamas and they're so comfy. And then some of them are really pretty too. So, well, I'm just delighted to be with y'all. And the, the topic of enthusiasm is, you know, all my topics are typically out of need. Um, it's something that I'm, I'm in need of at the time. I'm always in the need of that because when I find myself kind of just moping around and being kind of drab, um, um, the next thing is I got to get out of this. I got to figure out how to get out of this. Um, I have a little clip I'm so excited to show you. While I was painting this week, I, I always look for something to listen to that I don't really have to watch much. So I try to find an artist who is talking or a spiritual thing. And so I put on the um, memorial to Richard Schmidt, which was a recording of seven hours on YouTube of all these artists that studied with him, and they're all painting. Dan Gerhardt, Jeremy Lipkin, Rose Franson, Michelle Dunaway. They're all painting uh, on Zoom, and they're all talking about their memories with Schmidt and how he influenced them. And so there's a little segment in there that I want to share with you guys. But first of all, I want to know what you've been working on. Does anybody have anything to share? Norma, I never got back with you on a critique for your building. I'm so sorry. I, I answered it once and then I totally just let it fly up on my screen. How, that's are you that's done? fine. I understand. Yeah, I, oh. I took it to her this morning and she was well pleased. So oh. what a relief. That's the hardest part painting, I think. Did you have a picture of it, the final? I have a, I have a picture of it, but I also have, I still have it here. Oh, you still have Let it. Let me just show it. Oh. Yeah, because I'm going to take it. It is a, um, oh, wow. a surprise gift. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Let me bring it closer. That looks so good. Bring it closer because I wanted to see how you handled the front. I know you were struggling with the front. Yeah. And and what you said just Flattening. made a whole difference. I mean, it is new black top in the front, but it just kept, it was just so flat. And there was no way to flatten it dark, but continuing. So I just lightened it and, mm. and like the light was hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping, the, keeping your strokes horizontal sometimes will make it lay down rather than stand up like a wall. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Wow. That's fabulous. Norma, that is so nice. Well, thank you. you. I kind of, I got, I got so bored with it, and it's so good to hear because I think after we, we, sit, we sit and look at bricks and, and you know all the things that go into making a building it's just exhausting and it's it not like, that, get not like doing these pretty faces of my grandchildren <laughs> i've got that one and i've got this one i'm working on so oh wait, how wait, nice gotta, let me spotlight you again oh norma that is one oh she looks just look like the resemblance you. She does yeah, like you. Yeah, me and her and my daughter uh, oh. and then that's my other granddaughter that i'm working on that was Oh, you are busy. Oh. Tom flies. Oh, that's so awesome. good. So good. That's beautiful. Oh, Norma. But it had to be like tough. On your grandchildren, is there? <laughs> it had to be tough to go from the transition of those lovely, soft, organic lines of your grandchildren to the harsh, straight lines of a building. Yeah, that it was. It was so hard and so I don't want to say boring because I've never been bored in my life. But it was it was tiring, I guess, and exhausting. But you know, I guess it's just about I don't know doing things for people. You know, that's what they want, and they loved it. She loved it, so you know. Well, I enjoy that do, part of it. Everything you do um, perpetuates. Well, there's Jackie. Yay! It 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 adds to your um, your skills. I mean, no matter what, oh, exactly. it, it's going to help your skills along the way. And I, it's hard to describe just exactly how it does that. But as long as you're picking up a brush. Hey, Jackie. Oh. Hey, Hi. Oh. <laughs> I've been trying to get on. I'm, I'm at Walmart and I said, I got to get on at least while I'm in the car. <laughs> oh, so glad you're I miss here. you guys. Good to see you too. Her big smile and her beautiful glasses. Talk about pretty glasses. We were talking about decorating ourselves this morning, Jackie. And, you know, that's a common bond that we have. We all do it in different levels. <laughs> but we do decorate yeah, ourselves. definitely. And it's so much fun. And um, I miss that. Yes. I got to get back to it. Yeah. I got to get back to it. 
um, I sent you all this little slide of what enthusiasm looks like in your life. And I think that's what we've been talking about is. I hope mine don't look like that. <laughs> I love it. It just makes me smile because it makes me feel better about my body. You know, this is what we're supposed to look like at this age. We're not supposed to be all hourglassy and smooth and all that stuff. Yeah, but I don't want anybody else to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny, though. It makes you smile. It's funny. It makes you smile. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, I've been dragging some cause I'm in the middle. I'm not, I don't have any big project I'm not excited about right now. And, and my kids are my project and I love them. <clears throat> I'm just, I adore them. And I know this, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but, um, I, I'm, I'm having a little, little lag, um, at it. I want, this is Dan Gearhart's and if, I hope you can hear it, but I want you to hear, um, uh, he's talking about. Um, how much Schmidt influenced him in his art. You know, it, it's so many people because Schmidt was so generous and he taught so, Casey Ball and, and all, all kinds of very well-known painters have studied under Richard Schmidt. Most of the time it was free. Most of the time he said, come and stay with us. I mean, he was more than generous. And these are amazing painters. So you can tell his influence was just through the roof. So he be, it's only two minutes, so bear with me, or three minutes. Uh, he talks about edges and what Richard taught him about edges at first. Uh, okay. But I want you to... Can you hear? The way light hits form. Yes. Let me move this. That's, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the mountain in the background is the sharpest thing. That beautiful painting of Sargent's, the olive trees, and um, I believe it's in Corfu. Uh, you know, there's this, these gorgeous, vaporous olive tree branches in the foreground, and then right through a little hole in the in the tree, you can see a mountain in the background. And that thing is razor sharp. So, you know, be a slave again to what you're seeing. And I would agree, Rich. You know, Richard's um, treatment of edges really separates. It really separated him from uh, his peers, as Rose said. And he passed that along to us and, and you know, it, through his books and gratefully we can pass it on to you. And, um, you know, it's just been real, real, real joy and a gift from Richard. You know, he was really big on, um, pr you know, the responsibility that he had in preserving the truths that he heard through Mosby who heard him at the Belgium Institute, isn't that right? You know, he was trained in, in Europe, you know, the, the kind of the, the high style of painting in Europe, uh, which included Sargent and Zorn and Sorrell. They all kind of had the same, you know, so he saw an absolute responsibility in carrying on that tradition of, uh, you know, what does it mean to paint air and light and, and not only that, he did it with such enthusiasm. I remember Richard standing in front of the, you know, he'd sit or st often sit in front of the subject. And first of all, he'd look, he'd just sit there and, can you see me? You know, he'd sit on his, his easel and he just would do this. He'd look at the, and he just absolutely in awe of the beauty oh. before him. So he'd take that in, then yeah. he would begin to paint then he would absolutely delight in his painting. He would, he, he'd put a stroke, he'd, he'd go, like, he'd, he'd put a stroke down and he'd go, look at that. <laughs> and he, like a child, and it was so beautiful. He wasn't bragging, he wasn't saying, look at me. He was in, just an absolute delight of, oh, so beautiful. of yeah, what I, he was, you know, what he was able to capture and mimic based on the gorgeous beauty surrounding him. And, you know, so he's passed that passion on to all of us as well. You know, certainly Nancy typifies it with her every spell in her being. Um, and, you know, I, I think we all do, you know, we, you can't do this stuff and not be blown away by the, you can't put it down effectively unless you are so deeply moved. And thank you, Richard, for showing us what that was like, you know? Um, 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for answering that question. It's a it's a pleasure watching you all at work. Thank you. So this was seven hours of um, just people painting and talking, and it's I don't know ten or twelve of them on there, and I just I painted five. I got it five hours or more of it listening to it and every now and then I'd have to stop and look like this was like a such a nugget out of that. Yeah, Denise. Yep. There was one thing he said that really rung a bell. I don't remember his exact words, but he said, <clears throat> you know, if you're not in awe of what you see, you can't record it. How did he say that? What did he say again? Yeah, uh, this, that's exactly how he said it. it. But I really identified that because with that, if and that's, you know, beauty, they say, is in the eyes of the beholder. That's why people can do such different things and still be so successful. And, and we can, I mean, just being in awe of something and recording that beauty and being in awe of that beauty. I mean, it does affect your work. It really does. That's why what Norma said about painting or, you know, your grandchildren. Yes. Um, you know, you just love, you just can't get enough of them. You just love can't them. Contain and, the excitement. Yes. And it, it translates onto the canvas. And I just, I just love that, that whole, you know, I can picture him <laughs> sitting back, putting his hands up and say, just look at that. Just look. <laughs> and see, I, I don't know if you can just listen to that and not watch it because I mean, look at the meandering line that he had from the flower to her hair across her shoulder back to the other flower. I couldn't, I couldn't listen to that, and not turn around and look at it. I wouldn't be able to paint and listen to that at the same time. Right, right. So I had a little bitty uh, box down in the corner of what what I was looking at while I was uh, painting, so I could glance at it when, whenever something would catch my attention. I could glance at it and then I could make it big and watch it. But yeah, his he the way he paints is just stunning. We're talking about uh, Dan, Dan Gearhart's Carla, and uh, he was sharing about um, Richard Schmidt and how enthusiastic Schmidt was about what he was painting. And, and Carla studied with his daughter Molly, and just knowing that that he's passed on so much of that energy and so much of that joy and enthusiasm. You know, he must be a believer. I don't, he mentioned God when I went, no. When I went to his workshop, uh, his uh, exhibit in Ohio, I got to sit in the lecture hall and listen to him for about two hours. And he went through slides and he did talk about God quite a few times. And I remember, I just prayed about that. And, but he was such, I mean, it just shows you how, God has created man with such a, an ability to enjoy life. Um, and even more so for those of us who are believers, you know, who have the spirit of God in us. And I, I think about that sometimes. I think of how I just trudge around sometimes and I look around at people who maybe don't carry that same, in that same way, don't really have that relationship. And if they can do it, how much more should we have the power to do that? to draw from that well when we feel down in the dumps, when we feel like we don't we don't have the want to to do it. Um, so here's a couple of questions. What are we passing on? You know, this was um, Dan Gearhart's uh, testimony of the influence that one man has had on his life. You can see it in him and he is a strong believer. He is a very vocal believer. Yeah, Denise. I think you just ask a great question. I think we all, I would like for everybody to answer that, if they would. What are we passing on? You know, you, you, we're talking about Richard Smith, but I can look at everybody and I know something about each person that is evident. I just think it's a, a great question and something maybe we, we ought to answer. Well, who's first? Denise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you passing on, Denise? I, I don't know. I guess somebody else I have to answer it. I can answer it for each one of you. Um, of determination, maybe? I don't know. Yes, absolutely. Joy. Joy in the midst of trials, which is so powerful. So powerful determination but i see that with each person on the screen is this determination i think that probably has to be a uh 
a common thread or we couldn't get through it. You know, we couldn't go this far. So I see determination on everyone that's here. So I, I love your glasses, by the way. Those are so cute. We were just talking about <laughs> a recording, Carl. You hopped, <laughs> hopped on. We were talking about makeup. And I said, well, when you're going oh. like this, it doesn't work real good. But I just stick colored glasses on. <laughs> Jackie too, huh? But Jackie does the makeup, hair, clothes, and glasses. Yeah. Look at her. I didn't oh, see her. I do look great. Only, only if I'm going somewhere, but you ought to see I'm a real bomb at home. I don't, you know, it's only if I have to be out. <laughs> and then I'll hide it with a mask, if you know, and hair yeah, all around yeah, my yeah. eyes. So, but uh, what was the question though? I was busy what, trying to get it to my garage. Pass, what are you what? passing on? What are you oh, wow. On? Man, legacy, everything that I guess what I re received from my parents and from everybody around me, I'm passing it on because it's kind of filtered through me to children. I'm teaching children and, and kids, and I think that's my passion too in every art, in every form of what I know, like art, music, and stuff like that. So I think I'm passing on, you know, it's generational in our family. So I think it, it just continues on with who I am, I pass it on to whoever I can share light to, you know, and Aww. give love and light to. So I think that's the that's the question, right? Yes, and it's like it the beams of light <laughs> come out of your eyes and your everywhere. They just it Oh just, my gosh. I, well, I just I just came from and I'm real quick, I just came from singing at, uh, at on the military base at a prayer break. So wow. I'm really hyped and and to be able to share with these kids, 21 year old soldiers, wow. you know, they're so young and it's just like, I have a passion for them. And I think that's what I'm called to at this, at this um, part of my life, you know, part of what I do is I'm just called to the military and it's, it's very rewarding. So it's just so, I'm probably why I'm shining now because <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> I'm and just like on a roll. Every day ain't like this, but I'm, you know, whenever it is, I'm just going to go for it, you know? <laughs> and you know, when I first met you, Jackie, you were, you had been offered to go on a cruise ship to sing and you were trying to decide what you wanted to do. You were, you were in the middle between jobs and, I, you know, exactly. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of in the waiting room right now too, in between projects, in between things. And so having the faith to say, God, you've brought me on this journey. You're going to complete it. You're going to take me to the next season. You're going to show me what you want me to do because we all, we're not happy unless we have a purpose, unless Absolutely. we are passing on something that's of value. Right. So that's, if, if life is not worth living if you, to me, if you can't do that. That's exactly right. Because I don't think we're here for ourselves. We're here for other people. We're here to love on, you know, in a time like this, we here, we're here to give and to love. And sometimes we need it ourselves because I'm Absolutely. not always so chipper, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I try, I try to be every day and deal with circumstances as I deal with them and still share, you know, not think so much about myself or what I'm going through, but you know, there, there's some people that are a lot worse than us. So it's just wow. sharing everything I am. It's just, I, you know, I was praying about that one morning. I said, Lord, I'm just oozing. It's like I'm oozing everything. It's just like, I just got to give it to somebody, not keep it in. It's like I ooze. And I think everybody on this, on this, hi, everybody on this, uh, I'm waving at the workman. Work <laughs> they were in my way and I was trying to get in my garage. So but anyway. <laughs> Jackie, your passion. Uh -huh. I was gonna say, Jackie, your passion and your energy is so inspiring and infectious. You oh, know, man. it's just yes, just oh. love seeing your post and and check when you share all that. It's oh. so it's wonderful. See, you never know who's looking. You know, I oh. didn't know you guys were watching, but sometimes Christy will say something. But thank you. That's what it's all mm -hmm. about. I I truly love people, and I love to love. I love to share love and whatever I have. That can make people's life better and i guess it's i guess it's the way i've been raised i don't know what it is well like that's that. key jackie and i'm glad you said that because i've got some pictures of my mom on here on this slideshow i want to show you on a few minutes because i i forget that it's been passed down to me 
Exactly. Uh, and, we, and you might not be your mom. It could have been some, uh, another influence that you had in your life. But who yeah. you know, stopping to recognize that sometimes and saying, you know, this is a legacy. That's what you started out saying. This is a legacy. What yes. legacy am I passing down? You know, we we talk about this house and having it for Matt with all the different parts to it. But the more important things are the inner legacies that you pass. I've got a little desk here when I, I rearranged this big living room so that I could paint because I had a girl come over and say, oh, you know, you need to do this out front because this is your big grand living room. And I'm like, no, we don't have a grand living room. No, yeah. We live and work here. This is where, you know, I've got a little reading area here now. I've got an art area and I've got Desi a little desk right beside me because she loves art, y'all. Oh, sweet. She loves art. <laughs> So it's a wreck right now. It's got stuff all over. It's got Play-Doh and, and squirt bottles and stickers. And But what, you know, what am I going to pass down that way? Um, I was just going to say, my living, room, my living room is a studio right now. I totally understand. <laughs> since yes. it's, it's turned it into this, like, music right. studio, it's like, well, we used to have a living room. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have a room that's just for sitting? I mean, who exactly. just sits, you know? It I don't think that's what most people do. It's not like, he's, like, living, you know. he's like, if you want to do your art here, who cares? Just bring it I on. Know. Know. This is yeah. absolutely that's living. My living room is a gym now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's full of, full of gym equipment. <laughs> You know, that and, goes back to and the studio. We stay in here all the time anyway. So yeah. it's just, uh, you know, scrunched together. But hey, it's OK. It's well, it goes back to what people expect and our people pleasing mentality of, oh, you're supposed yes. to have this and you're supposed to have that. And and why, when we moved into this house, this is a huge room, y'all. It's got 15 foot ceilings and it's wow. huge. They had like six pieces of furniture in here that were the gaudiest things. And they were just two love seats facing each other and these big gaudy chairs facing each other. There was nothing else in here. And oh. they never came in here. I guess if they had company, remember the, the plastic over your grandmother's couches in the front living oh, yeah. room or something, nobody's supposed to go in there because you'll mess it up. It's just for when the preacher comes or... <laughs> Why would we waste it? Anyway, I needed that little confirmation. So thank you for I gotta, that. I got to say this, y'all. I don't know how old everybody else is. <laughs> I am 68 years old. And I've spent most, I've spent 60 plus years doing what I thought I was supposed to do. Oh, now boy. I'm doing what I want to do. Yes. <laughs> I hear you. I I mean, you got the right too. I don't you, mean that in a selfish way. But I mean, mean you know, uh, yeah. 10 years ago, I would have not considered turning my living room into a gym, but you know, why, why have a room you're not going to use? And it wasn't. So it just isn't anymore. I mean, just it, it living by other people's standards just drains you, yeah. you know? And if you want a fancy living room that no one sets in, you ought yeah. to have one. That's your business. You ought to have one. And if you don't, you need to fill it full of junk and, 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 and gym equipment if you want to. Well, well my, hus have... my husband complains because I have every room in the house. He's he only have an office. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have every closet just about. I got, you know, <laughs> so after after we're going to be married 20, I think 27 years this month. And he just knows that's just the way it is. That's what can I say? Is. This is what you married, everything and everything that come with it, you know, so he's okay. having your space, though, Jackie, you know, even if your space is everywhere, but exactly. having your space, you know, like I did have a de uh, girl come over who's a designer and she went walk through. Mm -hmm. She's a friend from church. And I, I said, well, what would you do if it was yours? And then I totally threw almost all that out the window. But one of the things she told me was to move that big love seat over there by my bookshelf. Yeah. So that there's a place for me to go if I want to go and just look at books. And so, and then to move this big dining room table that I was using, cause for twice a year, we have everybody, the whole family over to move it over against this wall and use it as my desk. And it was the smartest thing. So she gave me some great ideas and it's, it just reminds me how I get stuck in a certain yeah. way of doing things. Yes, we yeah. do. A certain yeah, way my do. furniture's arranged and I can't- Not just in our houses either. Yes. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I can't how think much, outside of it. How much yeah. of what we're doing has to do with what someone else thinks of it? Yeah. Because 
You're supposed to have a pretty living room. You're supposed to this. You're, well, you're not. You know, it's you're supposed to do it's your space and you're supposed to do with it what you wish. That and sounds like it's very practical. Same with uh, our yeah. art and same yeah. with so many things. You know, we do what we think will sell or what we think. But exactly. Getting back to what we're passionate about, what, mm -hmm. what we want, what, what do I really want? I still have that chalkboard in the hallway that says, if you could do anything you want today, what would you do? Mm. And that, that question is so powerful to me on a daily basis because I slip back into taking wow. care of everybody else and doing what yeah. needs to be done versus what do He's I really here. want to do? What do I really want to do? And I don't know. That goes back to what, what Richard Schmidt and Dan Gerhardt said, brings it back full circle. It's yeah. about your passion and enthusiasm and it, you should be expressing it. And Richard Schmidt did express that wonderfully in his work but i think we should be expressing it in every aspect of our lives yeah that's my desire somebody else norma what are you passing on we'll call you out <laughs> i thought we were done with this Carlin. question uh well i just recently had um uh the gentleman that i grew up next door to that was an artist that inspired me as a child to paint he just recently passed away and, uh -huh. and he just, he put that love in me and I carried it for years and I, I really never could get, um, get to paint until a, a lot until recently. And I just, I feel like I want to get as much out and share as much of me and the beauty that I see around me, especially like my grandchildren, yeah. <laughs> but just to get that beauty out there and share it with the world and like he did. And, and I would love to, for people to look at me like they did him and see that, that twinkle in your eye when you talk with, about your art and enthusiasm and, and to let people know. And it, there's something that um, Carla had posted about every painting being an adventure and that's why we live to be older. And I hope, you know, to, to live to be older and to get as much as I possibly can out. And especially because I have failing eyesight, I want to do as much as I can right now so that in case something does happen you know that i get get to share more i don't know that little bit of urgency sometimes is what we need that little push and who knows what god has up ahead but but sometimes the urgency makes us think you know i better do it now i better do it now because yeah. we. my can't grandfather was blind so i guess i know that it's a reality you know it could happen mm -hmm. to us but with modern technology i i don't fear it as much but still you never know so right did you see that they just had successful transplants to blind people? No. Wow. Yes. They just, 19 different patients were just wow. successfully transplanted that were blind. So there you go. There's your hope. Wow. <laughs> Even in the storm, wow. there's hope. We I'll have tell you another story. Our neighbor, this is a little bit off track, but our neighbor has um, terminal prostate cancer and he's starting a medicine on Thursday that has shown to make it disappear. Like it attacks the cells and eats it up and makes it disappear. And I mean, he's at his last month. And if this oh. works, would that not just be? Oh, wow. You talk about hope and just, are you kidding me? How exciting just to have it, have this possibility. Anyway, that, I'll be, well, I'll be and that, that's a good point, Carla, because are we passing on hope? Because there's so many people wringing their hands right now. And I can mm -hmm. wring my hands any given day on finances. We just had an HVAC go out and all the different things that, you know, can happen on a daily basis and start to worry and get fearful about finances. But whenever you hear somebody that has hope, aren't you just attracted to them? I mean, you, you yeah. long to hear words of hope and not just dis despair and, and complaining and the what ifs and, and the negative. Yeah. So much of that on Facebook. Yeah. It's so much, I'm, you know, and it's just, uh, I think it's wonderful to make it, to determine yourself to not add to the ugliness, but just yeah. to the beauty. Pass on hope and words of, of encouragement. And that's that's something that I, I hope I pass on and I got from my mom. I'm gonna disappear. So this is my mom. I've shown y'all this picture before. She's mm -hmm. the one in the in on the left. Um, and I've got several different pictures over, hold on. Um, this was when she's in, was a nurse for so many years and people just everywhere we went they they loved my mom and she you know was always the planner of parties and always had joy 
Um, and she passed that down to us. This is my mom on the left and my stepmother that married my dad. <laughs> And they were good friends and they were so sweet to each other. And this is me and mom on a picnic when my sister was in her last stages of cancer. We went, we just went and was, were just silly and uh, just had a really good time. And I think about, I've got these pictures of, of Lucy and Ethel and just how important it is to pass, you know, to pass our joy on and to cultivate joy. This there was that enthusiasm again in that last slide. Yes, that's enthusiasm, and that's choosing not to, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. You know, that is so key, and, and, and it drains out of us sometimes. Do, do you mm -hmm. feel it just draining out because of so many different things? Um, these two ladies here, don't you love that on the left? Um, their wrinkles, their, I don't know what they're holding in their hands. Are they, are they smoking a pipe? <laughs> They're smoking a pipe. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I guess. I don't know, but that's so funny. Um, I don't know where I found Go it. Go for it. <laughs> I know. I know. And I love this one. A good laugh is like sunshine in the house. Um, and how many days sometimes do we go without a good belly laugh? You know, sometimes. This one, my sister and I, um, we love this. And, I, you know, I painted this a few years ago when I was doing a collage thing. And I have it. I need to get it back out. But um, I get so excited when my sister's coming over. And just having those kinds of relationships, you know, are so important. Who go, where'd you go? <laughs> uh, well, let me go because I'll probably be getting out of the car here in a minute. Okay, Amy, go. All right. I got my friend Red with me. And when you were showing Ethel and Lucy and all them, that's us. Okay, we're downtown <laughs> trying to figure out what we're doing. So we're already doing that. I guess it would be I'd want to be passing up on positivity. Hi. Oh, hi. She's saying hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and so it would be positive, fun. I like to do memories. I like to go do stuff with the kids and different people and do what I call adventures or like doing something for the first time. Uh, and of course, uh, as you know, I have the parties. Yep. She's the queen of parties for sure. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're losing. Oh. We're getting yeah. funny noises. You've got you've got to celebrate life. So right. for whatever reason, you can find a party to do every day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You typify that for sure. She, um, she I never know where she's going to be with their kids. You know, um, she takes them to the craziest things and the most fun things. It's all about what kind of fun thing can I can we do? Uh, my little sister that's passed was like that. She was she would spend her electric bill money on a party for the kids at school or, you know, just something crazy um, that she was all about fun. So I love that about you, Amy. And you definitely are passing that on. Uh, she's one you want to have at your party for sure. Okay, Bridget, I'm going to sit you up at the top here on my screen. What do you think? I, I'm trying to pass on um, some creative nuggets. I'm, I'm, I'm facing a big Hallmark birthday coming up in November of turning 70 and and count counting my blessings and trying to make sure that i've made something for all the grandchildren tangible that is is something they really attach to so i'm working on a dragon box right now for my grandson and a little mermaid it, it, right now everything that i'm doing is crafting it's i'm not doing fine art right now mm -hmm. i don't know exactly what's pulled me away from it but um it's so, so I'm working in polymer clay. I'm working in resin. I'm, I'm crafting. I'm, it's, some of it's three-dimensional and um, sculptural. So it, it's just, just different. Different. Um, yeah. Does it feel less than when you say that? Do you feel like it's less than your, your it, high it capabilities? Isn't, it isn't for me, but I feel like I have to explain it because somehow <laughs> it's crafting. <laughs> and, yeah, just just it's the way it's I've had skill. To it's you're very skilled, no matter what you do. Well, yeah. I've spent a lot of time convincing people that painting in acrylic isn't crafting. That my <laughs> fine art, as it was acrylics, wasn't crafting. That's highly skilled. <laughs> but I That's am going to go next month. Um, this time next month, and Christy mentioned Maine. We will be in Maine. Oh, and no. it's the first time I've ever gone there. 
And we're going to see that lighthouse that I did the little painting of, the nocturnal lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, so we're only going to be there for three days. We're meeting with some of my husband's academy mates. It's sort of a mini reunion. Um, we rented a big house that uh, several couples are going to get together. And we're going to go out on, on a lobster boat. And we just just do something completely different. And I'm going to take a lot of pictures to work from. And I think that might be kicking me back into the fine art when I come back at the end of mm -hmm. September. It's beautiful there. Oh, I love that. That's, that's Never been. That's Girl, I hate to tell you, but your crafts are fine art. Yes, they are. <laughs> it's so funny, I'll, your perspective. I'll post the pictures when I get it done. Yes. I'll, 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 I'm taking pictures of stages. I mean, there's people that do crafts, and then there's people <laughs> like you that, whose crafts are fine art. That's right. Well, That's bless right. your heart, Carla. <laughs> That's true. You know? I said it better myself, Carla. That's true. How we minimize sometimes um, things or how we look at them. You know, I, I had a basket full of sunglasses at Destiny's birthday party. And at the last minute, they're all her little crazy ones with flowers and zigzags. Mm -hmm. And I had everybody put a, pick a pair and I took pictures of everybody. But, you know, we're looking, we look at things through glass, different kinds of glasses sometimes. And we minimize things or we, we feel like they don't count. And that's one of the things during COVID I've felt like it's been for me as much as you guys to say, whatever you're doing, whether it's digging a flower bed laying rocks in a path doing clay it's you put your skill and your passion into it mm -hmm. uh, mark was out there yesterday at, behind the cottage and he's always about safety and he was saying you know these rocks they really probably are not very feasible back here because somebody's going to trip and i'm like <laughs> you know I, it, it it's a different thing for me. It was laying each one of those rocks and put the designs I put in the bricks and the flowers. That's a creative endeavor that doesn't always, isn't always viewed the same mm -hmm. by us or other people sometimes. So one of the, one of the quotes by Emerson, I'll go back to that in a minute, but Carla, thank you, Bridget. I love that. And I, I love the legacy. It reminds me of what I'm doing, want to do for my grandchildren, which is to do sketchbooks and sketch them and write stories in them right now since Destiny's still so small, especially. So, okay, Carla, you're on, kiddo. I'm interrupt people. Um, so I guess I'm like, Bridget, it's more like where I'm headed. Um, I'm in such a transition point in my life where the negativity just isn't something I want to be a part of at all. And so it's very interesting. We, we studied this in Bible study and it's like when you pull away from that, you almost don't have anything. There's an emptiness where that used to be. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went back to painting dogs because I needed what makes me happy to paint. <laughs> yeah. I bet everybody can guess. <laughs> um, but I had to get the joy back in it. Um, and that's, I, you know, and I'm just like searching for, like I'm studying with, um, I don't know how to say her name, Jen Garardi, I think her name is. And she does the form of the dog just so amazing and that's what i'm I, I, you probably remember helping me try to figure out the box on the top of the very thing because i can't figure out form <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so for me but you know and in big picture i have um seven ne nieces and nephews that don't know the lord and he, most of them don't have parents or grandparents and as far as our side of the family and, and no grandparents um so it's like I said, on our, our side of the family. So I'm just trying to figure out how to, being an aunt is different than being a parent, um, yeah. but it still can make a difference. That. So, I, you know, I, so that's where I'm at, just trying to figure out how to be more like Jan Parker, Bridget. <laughs> yeah, Jan right? Parker. Yeah. That's a tall order. <laughs> yeah. Jan, no, Jan, there's a, there's a girl oh. that Bridget and I know from um, her water exercise days that, I mean, if you want to meet someone who exudes joy, right? Absolutely. And positivity and all of it, just, she just channels it. She's just such a, um, that's my goal right there. <laughs> and, you know, that, I'm not even having <clears throat> to do the PowerPoint today because y'all are covering it all. But that was one of the things is to put yourself around people like that, you know, on purpose and mm -hmm. limit. Somebody posted something this week about, um, if you want toxic people to stop draining you, quit giving them a straw or something like that. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like put yourself in a different environment. 
but it's really interesting when you pull back and you because I can get I can get as critical as anybody I mean that's my nature a management personality can can be as critical and analytical and I can do it but I I, I don't want to add to I want to add to the light not the yeah, you know, and, and but it's really interesting when you pull away and you don't engage. And in our family, we call it the gray rock. If someone comes at you and you don't respond and you don't, what they're, look, what they're looking for is a reaction. Mm-hmm. And so if you gray rock it, like, like I said, that's what we call in our family. Mm-hmm. They don't, it, they go away. And it, 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 they don't, yeah. 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 That's but it's, it's not always, not always easy to do. Oh. So. But it's interesting to see their reaction because it's like, is something wrong with you? It's like, no, I'm, but how do you explain to people that, no, it's me that's changing. It's not you. (laughs) Well, and I love that, that assessment too, that you are a management type personality. You are a, you know, I'm a figure outer and, and recognizing those things. Sometimes we have to realize the limitations that can come along with them or the extremes that can go with them. Um, so I love that honesty and that, that self-evaluation there because that, that's what takes us away from passing on what we want to pass on is sometimes when our strengths become weaknesses. Um, and one more thing I'll say, the biggest thing I've learned in this last, since, my, since my, my brother taught me this, just making allowances for other people's choices. Remember that thing I posted that there's value in wrong decisions. And so we can't control everything in everybody's right. life, even though we want to. And so to just let go and realize that even if people make wrong choices, there's value and they, they will learn sometimes yeah. hard lessons, but yeah. we, you know, we have to honor their, their life choices and who they want, you know, their path. Well, yeah. And I learned that's a big thing in Al-Anon is, you know, give people a right to their own choices, their own responsibility, you know, they're grown. And even if they choose what seems to be wrong to you to give them the honor and the, the right to make those choices and um, set your own boundaries as well. Wouldn't it be great if the world would do that? Yeah. Yeah. It would be. And we will have a world one day where that happens. That's right. So you I was, heard Amy, Amy Grant's song, Far and Wide. I don't know. It's a beautiful, um, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm be quiet for this, but it's no, a beautiful it vision. Down. It's a beautiful vision of, um, that we're getting closer to heaven all the time and that, that when you're going to get to this mountain and then you're going to look back one last, mm. oh. <laughs> you're going to look back one last time and then when you go through the river, you're just made clean. And so don't, 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 don't dally looking back. Just get, get through the river and then you'll be in heaven. And God, what is with my neighbor? It's so real because knowing he's facing that. And, and sweet Sue. I know I, I was fixing to say that um, we're, we have Carla's doing a, a Bible study thing that we're doing right now on conversation piece and how we talk and communicate. Sorry. And one of the sweet ladies, no, Carla, that's, that's what we're talking about. Letting the enthusiasm and passion that you have about something letting it come through in an authentic and honest way. And Sue is 81, I think. She's been battling cancer now, throat cancer since 1999. So wow. she's had every kind of chemo. And But she is the w- most wonderful, strong. She's been one of my prayer partners now for many years. And um, she's on Zoom. She got on Zoom the other day. And just listening to her testimony, uh, if she and she kind of answered this question of what are you passing on in that she has great grandchildren and grandchildren, most of whom none of them are believers, and she has prayed for them. And I've prayed alongside her for her grandson and seen you know God working in their lives for her husband. He passed away, but her prayers. One of the things we finished with the other day was her prayers will keep on working. She's in her last stages most likely. Her prayers will keep on working after she's gone. And if we ever think about that, that prayers, um, they don't just stop and boom, there's nobody left down here praying for you. But those prayers are continuing to be heard and they are they don't go away. It says God puts them in a box or um, I don't, I, I forget the scriptures about that, but that's something to remember too, that when we, when we just feel, feel like, well, all you can do is pray about it. And how many miracles have we seen with Denise, with Sid, yes. with my, my, my best friend from first grade, her um, fiance has the most aggressive kind of brain tumor and it's 
it's gone and it's been almost a year and they can't find it like when they go look at it you know and and usually you don't even it's very rare to live past a year or yeah past like months and you know and here this neighbor might be getting this medicine that can wow I, know. Possibly, I mean it's just there's so, so many nice. miracles i mean prayer is so powerful it is it is and one of the things too i'm, I'm seeing jackie's fan up there um and the light it's okay jackie i like it i want but when sue was on she's every week that she's on she just uses her phone and so most of the time there's a light right above her head and one week we were noticing and talking about the light that exudes from her, just like we were talking about with you, Jackie, with all of you. All of you have just beams of light coming out. But that light was over her head and it was lighting her whole head up. And I took a screenshot of it because it reminded me of that movie, uh, that little kids movie with joy. There are all the, anyway, I'll send you a picture of it, but she just glows when she walks. She just kind of glows. And if you watched um, The Shack, the movie The Shack, there's um the holy spirit is a beautiful indian girl and when she walks you just see this little every now and then you see this little glow and look at jackie now she's got it right over her head you fixed it just right girl denise has got one over her head too just to remember that we we spread we're light spreaders with our art um, what, what is my little quote on my email? It says, um, such is the duty of men to send light into the darkness of men's hearts. And so that's, if we could think of ourselves like that, that we glow when we walk. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, I hide it under a bushel. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm hiding it under a bushel. Um, so I have to be aware of that and get to the well every day because that's, that's where I recharge my battery for my light is getting in the word every day. So I'm so glad I can share that with y'all so freely. Um, did I give Daniel her a Daniel Gerhardt says that too. He said, you want to know the true answer to why? At the end of his videos, he says that if you want to know the true answer to my light, is it's Jesus Christ. And he he just gives a testimony every every video you watch, like the beginning and end. <laughs> it does. I forgot about that, Carla. I love that. Uh, he looks like my son a lot. So I feel real close to him. I sent him a text one time and he replied back and was real sweet. Um, not a text, but a message on Messenger. So, so anyway, just to, to realize that we share that, we, we uh, ignite it in each other. I love it. I want to close you guys with this little story. If you still have time, if anybody needs to, to go ahead and log off, that's fine. I'll post it. But it is, um, it is a chapter out of Max Lucado's book, and it's just it's, it's a couple of little pages, but it talked about a changed face and a set of wings. It says, people on a plane and people on a pew have a lot in common. All are on a journey. Most are well-behaved and presentable. Some doze, others gaze out the window. Most, if not all, are satisfied with a predictable experience. For many, the mark of a good flight and the mark of a good worship assembly are the same. Nice, we like to say. It was a nice flight. It was a nice worship service. We exit the same way we enter, and we're happy to return next time. A few, however, are not content with nice. They long for something more. The boy who just passed me did. I heard him before I saw him. I was already in my seat when he asked, will they really let me meet the pilot? He was either lucky or shrewd because he made the request just as he entered the plane. The question floated into the cockpit, causing the pilot to lean out. Someone looking for me, he asked. The boy's hand shot up like he was answering his second grade teacher's question. I am. Well, come on in. With a nod from his mom, the youngster entered the cockpit's world of controls and gauges and emerged minutes later with eyes wide. Wow, he exclaimed. I'm so glad to be on this plane. No one else's face showed such wonder. I should know. I paid attention. The boy's interest piqued mine, so I studied the faces of the other passengers, but I found no such enthusiasm. I mostly saw contentment. Travelers content to be on the plane, content to be closer to their destination, content to be out of the airport, content to sit and stare and say little. There were a few exceptions. The five or so, this reminds me of you, Denise, and your sisters. The five or so mid-aged women wearing straw hats and carrying beach bags weren't content. They were exuberant. They giggled all the way down the aisle. My bet is they were moms set free from kitchens and kids. The fellow in the blue suit across the aisle wasn't content. He was cranky. 
He opened his laptop and he scowled at its screen the entire trip. Most of us, however, were happier than he and more contained than the ladies. Most of us were content, content with a predictable, uneventful flight, content with a nice flight. And since that is what we sought, that is what we got. The boy, on the other hand, wanted more. He wanted to see the pilot. He asked, if asked to describe the flight, he would say, he wouldn't say nice. He'd likely produce the plastic wings the pilot gave him and say, I saw the man up front. Do you see why I say that people on a plane and people on a pew have a lot in common? Enter a church sanctuary and look at the faces. A few are giggly, a couple are cranky, but by and large, we are content, content to be there, content to sit and look straight ahead and leave when the service is over, content to enjoy an assembly with no surprises or turbulence, content with a nice service. Seek and you will find, Jesus promised. And since a nice service is what we seek, a nice service is usually what we find. A few, however, and this is you girls, a few seek more. A few come with the childlike enthusiasm of the boy. And those few leave as he did, wide-eyed with the wonder of having stood in the presence of the pilot himself. I just love that. I love Max Lucado and the way he words things. Good one. But I just thought, you know, go, be enthusiastic, be filled, and spill it out. I think that the, the common thread of everything we studied today has been enthusiasm. And you even have to bring that to your service for God. You have, regardless of whether you go to church, whether you serve, whatever, it, you have to do it with enthusiasm. And I have to think that really pleases God. Yeah. Well, I love you girls. And we have to well it up sometimes when we don't feel it, right? We have to act as, it. As Destiny would say, amen. <laughs> <laughs> She's behind me most of the time when I'm doing Bible study. And boy, does she put in some good. Um, she'll sing a song and just say, amen, 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 amen. She does. She does. Well, I love you girls. Watch. I'll be sending you some notes on when we're going to get started and what that's going to look like and which one uh, out of your choices that I finally narrow down to. Um, and I can't wait. Thanks, Chris.